Hi, everybody. Uh, I want to share some thoughts with you for Parshat Bo, the climax of the Exodus story when the Jews are liberated from servitude in Egypt. Expanding Boundaries. In this week's parasha, we have the final climactic culmination of God's wresting the people from the autocratic control of Pharaoh. The ten plagues are completed in devastating fashion with the death of the Egyptian firstborn. Pharaoh had claimed transcendent godlike power, but its very human nature was exposed when its basis, primogeniture, how the firstborn takes control after the passing of the father, when that basis of society was destroyed with that plague. The Torah has a fascinating mistrust of the firstborn. Theoretically, that too was supposed to be the foundation of Jewish society, as the firstborn son was to receive the double portion and the blessing of the father. But when in the Torah does that ever go right? The roster of firstborns ends up being a cast of would-be pretenders, too chaotic like Esau, or impotent like Reuven to take charge. Unlike the surrounding mythologies of the ancient Near East, our people was not founded in a divine bloodline. The sons of God, as it says actually in Genesis, um, Genesis 6, verses 1 to 5, were all wiped out in the flood. The Jews are a human people. That's what makes us special. Abraham's worthiness was not found in his demigodly bloodline, but in his character in his devotion, and in his willpower. He was chosen for this, not born into it. The children of Israel embody a paradox, to be both a family and a community. The Pesach offering embodies this fruitful contradiction, as Exodus 12.47 says so clearly, all the community of Israel has to do it. But who is this community? Who was in and who was out? What of marginal members of our community? What is the state of the ger, the stranger, the resident alien, the immigrant, the refugee? All these are translations of the Hebrew term ger. The Torah is very clear, and it is worth quoting in full. If a stranger who dwells with you would offer the Passover to the Lord, all the males must be circumcised. Then he will be admitted to offer it. He shall then be as a citizen of the country. There shall be one law for the citizen and for the stranger who dwells among you. In our exiting from slavery, we could have turned in on ourselves, mimicking the societal model of our oppressors, that only those like us are seen as our own. But God has a more robust and just model than that in which members can be naturalized and accepted in full. In this model of a pluralistic community, we are called to resist a version of belonging in which genetics determines one's status. Each gare who joins us reenacts the original choice of Abraham, now restaged in our Parsha, heading out into the desert willing to stake one's life on what is only a promise. The death of the firstborn is a difficult thing to encounter in our holy text, given the destruction and suffering that is wrought from it, and we should not ignore that reaction. But it is also a resounding rejoinder to a politics and social and political model founded on mere genetics, origins that determines one's destiny. The chosen people are defined by a choice, that they were not destined for this, but are the product of free will, both from its founder and from its God. Just when the Hebrews become a nation truly unto their own, freed from slavery, that is when our mission and nature becomes clear that this is a project open to any who wish to commit themselves to it freely. Those who choose to be chosen are to be included as full members of this community. It requires a full commitment from those who join, 
by their free will. And it is our responsibility to not merely accept them in their choice, but to endorse it with good faith. Shabbat Shalom.